Hi, we're Connor, Emily, and Catherine, and this is our presentation on cellulose nanocrystals. What is cellulose, you may ask? Cellulose is the most abundant natural polymer on Earth and is the main building block of trees and plants. It is present in bacteria, algae, and some sea animals. The figure below illustrates the chemical composition of cellulose. More specifically, cellulose nanocrystals are extracted from the cellulose microfibrils of the tree. The process of extracting cellulose nanocrystals from trees can be seen in the diagram. This illustrates the magnification of wood fibers to the wood cells, which includes the primary wall, middle lamella, and the secondary wall, to the macrofibril, to the microfibril, which is composed of cellulose and glycoproteins, and finally to the cellulose molecule. Seen here is the overall process. Refinement of biomass, including trees, plants, and crop residues, is the process of removing the lignin, hemicellulose, extractives, and inorganic contaminants. This is typically executed in a pulp mill. Pulp, which is approximately 85% cellulose, is either treated chemically to produce cellulose nanocrystals or mechanically to produce cellulose nanofibrils. Our interest lies with the cellulose nanocrystals, so we will discuss the details of the chemical treatment. Mechanical treatment forms cellulose nanofibrils, while, as discussed previously, chemical treatment forms cellulose nanocrystals. As seen in the diagram, Cellulose nanocrystals are comprised of mostly crystalline region, while cellulose nanofibrils are comprised of a combination of both the amorphous and crystalline regions. The chemical treatment of pulp can be broken down into a process which includes acid hydrolysis, which combines pulp and sulfuric acid, followed by liquid-solid separation, where water is inputted and acid and sugars are outputted, followed then by filtration to remove contaminants, and finally, obtain the concentration of cellulose nanocrystals. Acid hydrolysis is executed to remove the amorphous regions from the crystalline regions. Why does acid hydrolysis work? Well, the crystalline regions are more resistant to hydrolysis than the amorphous regions. This is important due to the crystalline regions possessing the desired properties of cellulose nanocrystals. In order to discuss how cellulose nanocrystals can be used, the properties they possess must be explained. Because cellulose nanocrystals are in the hydroxyl group, they have a high specific strength between 7.5 and 7.7 .7 gigapascals. They have a high modulus of elasticity of approximately 150 gigapascals, and they possess good liquid crystalline properties. The properties of cellulose nanocrystals depend on many factors. These factors include the time for reaction to take place, the temperature of the reaction, the type and concentration of chemicals used, and the origin of the cellulose. Cellulose nanocrystals have the properties to be very useful in a variety of industries. The applications where the use of cellulose nanocrystals as an ingredient are expected to be beneficial include materials engineering, including the aerospace and automotive industry, as well as in biodegradable packaging for lightweight, high-strength composite materials. Medicine, such as drug delivery excipient and wound healing patches, and electronics, such as actuators and sensors. The environmental benefits of using cellulose nanocrystals include having a material that is renewable, recyclable, and non damaging to the environment, all of which have become increasingly important to society. For this reason, its potential to meet sustainability standards is great. The specific values related to the economics of producing cellulose nanocrystals is currently not documented as the use of these nanocrystals are still in the initial stages of development. Cellulose nanocrystals have the potential to represent a dominant force in economic growth in the coming decades. However, the current high energy and cost to produce are holding it back. With an improvement in the efficiency and reduction of energy requirements for production over time, cellulose nanocrystals will become a much more economically viable option for mass production. In conclusion, cellulose nanocrystals are a material that is sustainable, 
biodegradable, non-toxic, and renewable. While nanocrystals are currently not widely used, they do have huge potential in the future of green manufacturing, where industries strive to reduce their pollution and waste, recycle and reuse materials, and moderate emissions in their processes in order to lessen their impact on the environment.